What if I told you that eating the soup from a bowl was no easier with a spoon than with my hand? And I'm not talking about drinking from the bowl. I'm talking, would you believe me? Or would you ask, what kind of spoon? So why in the world don't we do that for guides? Today, we're gonna change that. I talk about fully guided surgery all the time. There's a reason I say fully guided and not just guided. Not all guides are created equal. In fact, there are five types of constraint systems and seven different reference frames for surgical guides used to place implants. These types and their combination make up the Stanley Guide Classification System. Using this system is simple. Choose a constraint type from the column on the left, hopefully type four, and then choose a reference frame. Constraint types refer to what the guide actually constrains, such as pilot drills, osteotomy drills, and implant placement. Reference frames refer to the base your guide sits on. These can be attached to gingiva, dentition, implants, and more. Let's start at the low end of the constraint systems. A type zero guide is no guide at all. If you're using a type zero guide, you're doing surgery freehand. If you're currently freehanding your implant placements, don't worry. Almost everyone starts off this way, but there's a learning path to fully guided surgery. Next up, we have a type one guide. This is a visual aid. Type one guides often take the form of a suck down with a hole in it. If you get the implant coming out, generally in that area, you're better off than not. The type one guide doesn't include constraints of any kind. Remember, it's just a visual aid. Type two guides are where we start to get some constraints. A type two guide constrains only the pilot drill. This one is easy to remember. Think two millimeter pilot drill, type two guide. With a type two guide, neither the rest of your drills in your drilling sequence nor the implant are constrained. Type three guides constrain the pilot drill and all of the osteotomy drills. Finally, type four guides constrain the pilot drill, the osteotomy drill, and the implant as it's placed. Type four can also be called fully guided. This is the gold standard for implant placement. Next, let's talk about the reference frames. These aren't in order of efficiency. They're simply listed in an easy to remember order A through G. First, we have type A, attached gingiva. This is your reference frame for a patient who is a dentulous. It's anyone who's in a denture. In a case like this, you don't have many options other than sitting the guide on the attached gingiva. This guide goes right over the ridge like a denture and gets pinned in place. Next comes type B for bone level guides. The bone foundation guide is fixed to the bone and the surgical guide gets attached to the top of that. Type C means combination. Your guide can sit on a combination of teeth and gums, teeth and bone, or any other combination of reference frames. In this case, our guide sits on a couple of teeth in the back and then the bone in the front, making this a combination guide. Here's another combination guide, this one with teeth in the front and soft tissue in the back. Type D is dentition. This is the most common. If the patient is missing a single tooth, you put the guide right on the existing teeth. Be careful though, this one snaps down over the teeth and is a type four constraint system. This one snaps down over the teeth and is only a type one constraint system. The implant goes through this guide, while this one is just a visual aid. This is why it is so important to choose a system from each column. You need to specify both your constraint systems and your reference frame. Next, you have type E, electronic. These are your vision systems. Again, be very careful here. Just because you have an electronic vision system doesn't mean you have a type four constraint system. There are electronic vision systems that are type four, but also some that are type one. They both represent a significant capital investment. If you get an electronic vision system that's type one, it's basically doing this. Doctor, you're off. Doctor, you're still off. Okay, doctor, you're, you're okay. Okay, good. Doctor, you're off. Turn that thing off. 
It's sitting there nagging at you without really helping. This device, on the other hand, has a proportional integral derivative control algorithm. Don't worry, it's some more of that physics. It's a robot. With this one, once you get on target, the robot stays on target. If the patient moves their head, the robot follows and keeps it aligned. This one is a type four guide. Keep in mind that just because a device is electronic, it's not necessarily a type four constraint system. Type F, or field of view, just means freehand. It's basically your doctor's eye. You aren't sitting on anything. There's no guide here. Finally, type G stands for grounded via implants. If you already have integrated implants, you can use those as a foundation for your guide. These work really well because they are rigid. In this case, we attempted an all on four with locators, but one of the implants in the front didn't integrate. We made a guide with a type four constraint system and grounded on the implants. To do this, we placed abutments on the implants, slipped the guide over them, and placed the new implant through the guide. I wish I could end this video by sharing comprehensive data about which system to use in each situation based on success and failure rates of each constraint system and reference frame. Unfortunately, most studies don't account for these differences because the guide classification system hasn't existed. In fact, it was just published in April of 2022. In the future, we can hope that every study will control for constraint systems and reference frames. But in the meantime, you can see why it's best to always go fully guided by watching this video here. This has been another episode of Implants Made Simple. Smile Engineer, out.